Hey everyone, welcome back. So there is one company I'm embarrassed to say that is actually in my chip stock portfolio that I have yet to cover here on this channel. That company is Universal Display. Let's jump right into it. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Universal Display, ticker symbol OLED. Uh, this is an appropriate ticker symbol for, for this company. So historically, Universal Display is a research and development company. They hold a bunch of key patents for OLED displays or organic a light emitting diode displays. So you're probably familiar with LED displays, very common in TVs and a lot of tech devices. OLEDs are sort of a continuation of that technology. I'll, I'll get to that here in just a moment, but Universal Display has a bunch of patents. So going to our semiconductor industry flowchart, uh, the patenting section there at the top, but increasingly over the years, the company has also sold more and more base materials, some basic ingredients used in the manufacture of OLED displays. Uh, so base materials and gases, I would also fall, uh, file Universal Display under this segment here. And this is an interesting company that has uh, a very key relationship in this part of the tech world. You have to go through it if you wanna use OLED displays in your device. And they do have plenty of competition in the base materials, but they're constantly working on some new stuff there and have a really healthy base materials business as well. This is a unique semiconductor business. So let's get to that part of it. Why in the world is this company considered a semiconductor business. I'm going to borrow pretty heavily here from Universal Display's quarterly earnings slide deck. They update this every quarter, but they use they, they they reuse a number of slides here. You'll get familiar with these if you decide to follow the company. So first off, with some uh, definitions, what is an OLED? Uh, OLED is an organic light emitting diode. They are carbon based materials. Uh, that is layered in thin films between two conductive materials. And when an electrical current is applied, those organic materials emit bright light. Uh, so they have a diagram here showing what that looks like. And uh, so OLEDs, if, if you have a high-end smartphone, like uh, maybe an iPhone from the last few years or a high-end Android phone, You've probably been looking at an OLED display for quite some time. High-end tablets, like for example, um, Samsung's uh, high-end Galaxy tablets, some of those have OLEDs, uh, some wearable devices, and also some very high-end TVs. Perhaps you've seen LG's OLED TV TVs, beautiful picture. Uh, this is powered by OLED screen technology. What's the big deal with OLED technology? Well, besides just a, a better 4K or ultra high definition picture than what many LED TVs can achieve, Universal Display totes that theoretically anyways, there should be a lower bill of materials for actually manufacturing these things. They're also more energy efficient, which if you know how technology works, energy efficiency from all sorts of semiconductors, be that a logic chip uh, or in this case, uh, a display, uh, better energy efficiency is imperative. Uh, these things are also ultra thin, very lightweight. Let's go back though to the theoretical part of this lower bill of materials. You can see they have an illustration here on the left-hand side, a typical LCD screen and uh, the multiple layers involved and some of the extra complexity involved with manufacturing this versus an OLED on the right. 
as manufacturing of OLEDs scales up, uh, manufacturers get more efficient at making these, OLEDs should be theoretically lower cost to make over time. We are not quite there yet. Uh, not, not, not quite yet anyways. So Universal Display uh, always puts this in their deck to show where their growth is coming from. And you can see primarily over the years, it, it's smartphones. Um, smartphones have very quickly adopted OLED, again, because it's lightweight, it's energy efficient, uh, beautiful screens. So high-end smartphones have adopted these in mass. And uh, to a lesser extent, high-end TVs have started to take note of OLED. Uh, IT and wearables, though, this is going to be the next growth avenue for universal display. Uh, basically, PCs and laptops. Very few PC monitors and laptop monitors make use of OLED at this point. That could be about to change. You can see from this slide here, uh, kind of a flatlining in smartphone growth here for uh, 2022 and into 2023 before a rebound in 2024. Uh, you can see TVs starting to hit this inflection point where more TVs adopting OLED uh, could happen going forward, but specifically IT and wearables, again, uh, coming from that PC and laptop market starting to adopt OLED screen. So this slide here showing square footage of OLED panels um, from end market. So the smartphone market by and large played out here as far as growth goes, but in the coming years, TVs and I think more dramatically, IT and wearables, PCs and laptops. Now, I want to talk about growth drivers here for just a moment because it would appear Universal Display uh, has very few of them. In fact, so they just reported their final quarter for 2022 revenue was $617 million. Uh, the outlook for 2023 is that revenue is going to fall uh, to as much as 550 million or 600 million at the high end. But at the bottom end of that guidance, that's a more than 10% year over year decline. And the reason is, is that smartphone market. So as we keep talking about here, semiconductor industry in the midst of a downturn, the smartphone segment of the industry is doing more than its fair share to drag things down. And so of course, universal display getting hit by that expected uh, drawdown in smartphone sales, especially the first half of this year. Now, management expects that to change. The second half of 2023 revenue will be much higher, they say, than the first half of 2023. Part of it is the rebound in the smartphone market, but I think there's some other things at play here as well. Now, jumping back to Universal Display's presentation, here is one of the things that I think is going to drive this company higher in the coming years. Besides just more adoption in TVs, PCs, and laptops. So here on the left, um, I want to talk about the base materials part of Universal Display's business. The or the organic carbon-based materials that emit the actual light to create these displays. The company is currently selling red and green phosphorescent OLEDs. Blue, they've been talking about for years. It's still under development, but management has begun saying that by 2024, uh, so in about a year's time, blue will be commercialized along with red and green. This could significantly change things for Universal Displays manufacturing partners. They have to revamp their ingredient list, uh, rework some of their manufacturing lines if they're going to begin adding in that blue uh, phosphorescent material that Universal Display has been working on. This could be a big growth driver for Universal Display's revenue, not just because it's a new material that they can sell, 
But also if in conjunction with that, the square footage of, of their manufacturers continues to increase. And so just going back again to this previous slide, showing the square footage panel demand. I think this helps illustrate the tremendous growth universal display could have on its hands if it adds blue, a blue ingredient to the list. So it's going to have one new extra material to sell into that very large smartphone market. And now if you add in a growing OLED TV market and a growing PC and laptop market, in addition to adding blue ingredients to the list, uh, this could be a very, very strong double digit revenue growth company starting the second half of 2023 and especially into 2024. Now, in addition to that blue phosphorescent material, uh, Universal Display has also been working on some new manufacturing tech. It calls OVJP or Organic Vapor Jet Printing Technology. We're probably not going to see that get commercial, commercialized until 2025 or maybe even later. That could also further drive down the manufacturing cost of OLED. But I, I want to emphasize something here because I don't think analysts know how to forecast universal display going forward because of that blue material uh, that is supposedly going to begin getting commercialized in 2024. Now I'm showing you my ticker terminal here and you can see historically uh, revenue growth, uh, very strong, albeit uh, a bit lumpy, a couple years of decline back in 2018. Also, of course, in 2020, at the start of the pandemic. And then, of course, this updated expectation from analysts that revenue will decline in 2023 before taking off again in 2024. Um, you can see some projected lumpiness here. But again, I think a lot of this has to do with analysts just not, we don't know yet how to factor for the inclusion of those blue emitters. However, you can see along the way, regardless of the year, universal display, highly profitable as measured by gap net income, really, really fantastic, strong, uh, double digit net income profit margins, and in general, net income growth in absolute dollar terms. Even in a bad year, the company remaining uh, well in the black. And then let me jump over here to the cash flow statement. And you can see over the last few years, back to 2016 here, universal display, uh, highly profitable, even on a free cash flow basis. Uh, nice growth in free cash flow and then free cash flow profit margins, very high, typically at or well above 30%. Of course, the dip this past year due to some factors related to the smartphone market and with inventory building and whatnot, uh, still very strong cash generating machine over universal display. And I think that trend continues and maybe we even get a little bit of margin expansion here as Universal Display rounds out its mix of materials, perhaps in 2024, um, and also as its manufacturing partners recover from this current downturn as well. I think some of their patenting uh, royalty fee business will recover the second half of 2023. Now, I said I'm considering adding to my position later on this year. Currently, at this point, shares are definitely on the premium side. So over 80 times free cash flow. Now, uh, free cash flow is down quite a bit, especially in the second half of 2022, related to some inventory items and some, some catch up payments from some of its customers. But on an earnings per share basis, over 32 times trailing 12 month earnings as of this recording, I would like to see this stock come down about 10 to 15% before I add to it. So that's what I am on the lookout for. I think fair value on the stock is closer to about 120 bucks 
per share. So that's what I am looking for. Uh, I already own it in my portfolio, so I'm happy with that. But if I see the stock drop to 120 or lower, that is personally where I would add based on my fair value analysis. But again, I would emphasize it is really difficult to forecast what universal displays growth will be like the second half of this year, and especially in 2024, as it adds that new material, even more so beyond that, if we want to factor for some new manufacturing technology that it can sell to its customers. So I'm playing it safe with this stock. That's why I would like a little bit more margin of safety before I buy, and I'm looking for a more pronounced pullback. Nevertheless, I do think this company has a great deal of upside in the years ahead as more TVs start utilizing OLED, more laptops and PC monitors start using OLED. And longer term, I think also commercial lighting, automotive lighting uh, could also be a small market opportunity or will start as a very small market opportunity, but also add some growth for universal display as well. Hope this video has been helpful, gotten you acquainted with LED and OLED technology, which is, again, a semiconductor. So check it out. Put this company on your watch list at the very least and hit us up with questions in the comments below. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. See you again real soon. Take care.